point, we can now start building some performance point content. So I'm going to click on the heading where it's, it says performance point content, and we're going to build some content. And we're going to build all the different types so you get a feeling for, um, you know, the, the dashboard items as well as the reports. So on the reports, the two examples I'd like to focus on are the analytical chart and the analytical grid. Um, the analytical chart is similar to a pivot chart, and the analytical grid is similar to a pivot table. So if I'm going to build something that is an, a chart or grid, I should probably do this with a connection to one of my OLAP data sources. So I'll start with the grid, and as soon as I click on analytical grid, it goes to all my analysis services data connections. So I've got four analysis services data connections, and it's, it's presenting those as my four choices here. So I'm gonna, I, we haven't used an example where we have done a report off the SharePoint content. So let's try pulling up the SharePoint content. So I'll double click to connect to that. And it's now going to give me a blank report with the options that I have available to me in terms of measures and dimensions on the right-hand side, similar to what we saw when we were in Excel. So I could open up the detail on my measures. I could open up the detail on my dimensions. And I could you know, begin plotting what it is that I'd like to see in the various rows in the columns, and the background is where I can set my filters. Okay, so I'm going to start by um, adding my uh, project list to my rows. And the way my analytical grid is set up here in Performance Point is it always shows me the summarized all project list. It's not until I click the plus sign that I get a detailed breakdown of what those projects are. And you'll notice down at the bottom of the screen where I'm pointing, I've got a down arrow, which allows me to choose whether I want to choose see the, the parent, all projects, or just the children. In this case, I'm going to show only the children. So it's going to get rid of that heading that says all project lists. And then click OK. So it's going to reformat that so it no longer has the heading, and it now just gives me the, the details. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to add some, some data around these projects. Um, and this data that I have available to me is my issue and risk data. Um, I, can, I can see that, you know, tasks that are related to that. So I'm going to take my... Let's start with my um, issues, and we'll get a issue count by project. So I'm going to add that as a column. I'm going to take my issue count and drop it into my columns, and I can see how many issues we have for each project. And I'm also going to take my risk count and get a list of how many risks I have for each project. So I'm going to drop that into my columns as well. And I've even got some data on my dimensions. You know, if I wanted to see what these issues were, I could actually get a list of these issues. So if I take my issue list and I, I place my issue list, let's say I want to see that for each for my projects, I could see that underneath each project is going to give me the all issue list. Now, again, I, I really don't want all issues for every project. I want the children. So I'm going to remove the parent of all issue and click OK. So I just get the child, which is the the, the issues for that project. Okay, so I've got 
all issues and then I've got child of all issues list so those that's what I'm getting in my report now okay now issues don't have any cost related data it's just a count so if I've decided you know I really don't want to see this list of, of issues what I really want to do is focus more on a table report where I get some cost related data on my risks so I'm going to go in back to my my section on measures and drop in another column which is my risk cost so I'm going to take my risk cost and drop it right below my risk count so if there was a dollar value associated with that I'd see that showing up in this third column it doesn't look like I've got cost data associated with this well let me see if I've got um, risk impact associated that's another numerical field so I'm going to put risk impact so I, I may not have cost data but I do have impact and if you're familiar with the um, fields that are available in the project sites you can put in cost you can put in your exposure which is the impact and the light and the likelihood of happening calculates your exposure and that calculates your your cost exposure so you've got the total cost and then your cost exposure is calculated based on what your exposure is or likelihood of this risk happening okay since we don't have cost data there's no point in putting in our exposure so we'll leave that one out in fact all I have to do to remove my cost is click the X down in my lower portion and that will refresh my screen getting rid of my cost okay so I've got a nice um, table report here and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and save this I'm gonna put in my properties I'm gonna call this my um, issue risk analysis report and I'll go ahead and save that alright so let's do something that's a little more graphical let's take that same data and build a graph with this so I'm going to build another report which is going to be an analytical chart this time and it's going to be using the same um, live same data connection which is the SharePoint MSP project SharePoint And so if I've if I've built a graph, then I'm going to identify what it is that I'm plotting. And if we use the same fields that we were using before in our measures, we've got our issue count. Oh, dropped it a little bit short. There we go. And we've got our risk count. and we want to see that broken down by project so I'm gonna go down to my dimensions and I'm gonna grab my project list and put that as my series okay so I've got same thing holds true here it always pl plots the parent so I'm gonna click the down arrow and I don't want the parent I want all of the children so you'll notice here I've got the let me just move this to the side here um, if I want my all project list and I can I can select my children or I could I could just select all children there's a select I have to right click to do this by the way it doesn't have a little checkbox select children Oops. do this again so that I'm selecting all the children except timesheet related anything that is administrative time kind of gets lumped into a dummy project called timesheet and I don't want that included in this report so I'm including all children except those last two so now I can see my new report is plotting my 
count, my issue count and my risk count for the various projects. Now, you could, you could rotate this and do this the other way and say I want my issue count and my risk count to be the series and I want my project list to be along the bottom axis. So you know, if you find that, that this looks a little nicer as a, a graph, you could do so. You could even change the type of graph. Up on the ribbon for the edit, uh, you can choose the report type and change this to a, a pie chart. And you'll see because I've got so many different series, it's going to show a separate pie chart for each series. So here is an example where I'd say, gee, maybe I want to do it the other way around again. And I want to flip this around. So I've got now I've got two pie charts. So it's very easy for me to just you know, move the series and the bottom axis between the two. So I've got a pie chart that gives me a risk count and an issue count, and it's broken down by project. And I've got other variables that I can, can change. Um, if I wanted to you know, increase the font size and I want to you know, bold that font or make it red, I could do so. If I want to um, go in and look at the other settings that are available, I do have some view settings that are available, such as show the information bar. And what that does is it just shows if there's any background filtering going on. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and save this report. So let's just do a file save. And we've now created a two content types. We've, we've created analytical chart and analytical grid.